Do you know this logo? It's everywhere in, this, in these days. Uh, on cap, bags, uh, gadgets, shirts. And uh, I remember a text uh, about this number. Read this. OK. It's funny, but you know why, uh, why there is the logo. So I will to say, happy birthday, Astrocon. Uh, what about me? I'm Italian. I'm living in Argentina. And uh, I am a software developer. But since a few weeks, I'm no longer employed because I've decided to do a turn in my life to stay more time with my family. So now I'm, I am a freelancer. And uh, I'm working as, now as Astrid's consultant. And now uh, I need new customer to leave. So at the bottom of the hole, you can find my business card. And uh, last year, I've, uh, I stayed too in Astricon, presenting the talk Asterisk Dongled, in uh, which I, I showed how to use a GSM Huawei dongle and uh, install it uh, on Asterisk to do incoming and outcoming calls, use it, to use it as a GSM trunk, and especially uh, using the feature to send and receive SMS. You can download this talk um, from SlideShare. OK, this year I've decided uh, to present a tutorial session <clears throat> because I, I want to return to the community some knowledge I received in past. And I'm very thanked to the, the guys, and the authors of the Definitive Guide. Do you know these books? It's very famous. And I think uh, uh, this book is the, is the Asterisk Bible. And uh, uh, this book is a mandatory step in uh, your learning. So I invite you to, to meet the, the Definitive Guide team here today. OK, uh, so my talk is titled Asterisk and Database. The idea I want to pass is that Asterisk is very cool. But if we connect it to a database, it becomes powerful. Raise your hand who has never installed ODBC in Asterisk. OK, this talk is for you. And now, uh, hands up, who has installed or worked uh, with a database, read something, but uh, uh, needs to learn more about this, this union. OK, this talk is for you. and now. Raise your hand if, if you are an advanced user using ODBC all the day with a cluster asterisk server and, uh, and uh, using uh, MySQL databases. OK, are you sure to want to stay here? <laughs> it will be a, a, a beginner <coughs> tutorial. OK, this, is, this image uh, is used by the definitive guide. This image illustrates. Uh, it's a dog, a dog food sandwich, and it, it illustrates um, as image how to configure asterisk with a database. Uh, this image means more layers, and uh, configuring asterisk with database involves many files, and uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing, especially in this time of the, mo of the morning. OK, um, there are several, 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 distribution, several distributions and many databases. But today, I choose to use uh, Ubuntu and MySQL. But uh, since we are using uh, ODBC, you are free to use your favorite flower. OK, if we, we would uh, work with databases, we need to install a database, sure. So let's start with. Uh, execute the app get, install MySQL server. Then uh, we use the command mysecure secure installation to, to do more secure our server and uh, select, obviously, a strong password. After that, we need to configure the, the MySQL. So we create a database, in our case called the asterisk, and then we create a user too. And uh, a third point, we, 
grant all privileges on the Asterix user to Asterisk database, and then we log out and log in again with new credentials. I think today, nowadays, the best way to connect Asterisk with database is uh, using uh, ODBC layer. As middle layer, is it stay between application and databases. The advantages is that if uh, one day you need to change database and select another, you don't need to change any configuration on the Asterisk side, but uh, you only need to install the new driver. To install ODBC connector, we need to install Unix ODBC application. This is the layer. And in our case, using MySQL, we install also libmyodbc. OK, let's go <coughs> configuring the connection. We, are, uh, we need to modify and update two INI files. One is ODBC inst. Here we define which uh, database we are using, MySQL, and which driver, the library we installed uh, before. In odbc.ini, we define the asterisk connector, and uh, we can select which driver, MySQL, the, the, the previous uh, dr um, driver, and which database we have created asterisk database, and uh, on which server and port. Yes. Sorry? This file? For uh, Ah, file usage. Uh, I don't know in this in this case because I I've I've used this this option fixed. Okay, um, we have installed MySQL ODBC, but uh, Asterisk doesn't know yet it. So we need to uh, upload its configuration. We move to the source code folder and execute again the configure step. After that, we open the, we execute make menu select. It will open the, the new windows. Uh, here we can select Enable New Modules. In our case, we enable CDR Adaptive ODBC, uh, the famous Funk ODBC function, and in Resources Modules, we can install and enable REST ODBC and REST Real-Time. After that, we repeat the Make Install command, paying attention to don't repeat the Make Sample command to avoid uh, and the loss, loss the configuration files. OK. So uh, now we start to <coughs> configure it asterisk. We can modify res odbc.conf. Here we define the resources that connect asterisk with odbc. Uh, DSN is the data source name. We are using the same. Do you remember asterisk connector from odbc.ini? Username and password are the credential to take access in the database. And uh, uh, in funkodbc.conf, we define the functions uh, that uh, we will use later. But here we can uh, write any SQL command, select, update, delete, or even, stored, or even call stored procedure. OK, let's check our system. Executing from asterisk console, the command odbc show all, we should to see our data source name registered. Here, here we are with asterisk connector. So all the work is done. We have modified, here we are with, again with our sandwich. Uh, it represents uh, our system now with many files modified. If uh, someone is a little bit confused about files, here I, I, we can see the re relationship between them. So starting from the bottom, we have installed MySQL server, defined Unix uh, ODBC connector in uh, INI files. REST ODBC 
is the file that permits Hasterisk to see ODBC layer. And in Funk ODBC, we have all SQL commands, our queries. OK, now we have system configured. <clears throat> we can uh, start to interact with database from Hasterisk. And first features I want to show is how to access to a database from directly from dial plan. Uh, we, we need these features, uh, for example, for authenticate a user before calling uh, to international country or do international calls. We can use uh, a query to uh, register in um, insert in database answers from a customer to a particular survey and uh, other, other cool things. Okay, as practical example to see these features, uh, I'll present you um, an extension that uh, answer a call, ask for your age, then insert this parameter in a table, and then we can uh, calculate the average age of all of you. I know it's a, a little dumb example, but it suits our needs. So first of all, we create a table called age, and then in FunkoDBC, I write a simple query, insert into table age values, the parameter passed from um, dial plan. Our function is called save age, and DSN is asterisk, the, 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 um, that is the database connector, the, o, the ODBC connector. This is the dial plan. First of all, we play back a welcome message, then we read the age, the parameter, and then look at the fourth line. With uh, this command set, we execute the function save age, and the dial plan call this function and this function uh, receive the age parameter and insert it in table. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, I, we, we will test this function later. Uh, before this, I want to spend a word about the second feature that is uh, insert in the data database all CDR, all call detail record. So all information about each call uh, is possible to save it in a database. The benefit is that all information about calls is uh, inserted in a centralized database, so any third-party application, like, for example, a PHP web GUI, can access to it. Mm -hmm. OK, we need to create CDR table res with respect uh, the name of the column and the format, but look at the bottom, we can insert new columns as we want, uh, so we can add new information for each call and save it in the database. The file involved in these features is cdradaptiveodbc.conf located in ATC, e, ATC asterisk. Here we define uh, the connection, again, using the connection asterisk, table CDR. We can reload the module CDR Adaptive ODBC in uh, asterisk console. And then with CDR show status, we are seeing that we have a new registered backend that is Adaptive ODBC. So all information about calls is written in CSV, CDR custom files, and in Adaptive ODBC too. Let's go with a demo. demo. I invite you to call now this number. This number execute, answer you, execute this portion of the dial plan. And uh, after that, we can see the results. So please call this number. I will I'll wait some seconds. It is responding. 
Ya, oke. Okay. So please enter your age. You can digit your age and the extension write your age in a database table called ages. Wow, thank you. <laughs> so, in this page we can see all the records written in age table, thank you for call, and uh, the average age in this all is 35 years. Okay, on the other side, you know for each call, we have asterisks received, we have a record saved in database. So for each call we can extract from a database call date, caller ID, hidden, partial, partial, hidden caller ID, duration, bill sec, etc. The, the thing I want to, to show is that I'm using this is an HTML page, but is, uh, uh, it's a frame executing a PHP page on server located in Argentina. So uh, you can see, we can access to information saved in database from a third party application like a PHP. Yeah. So now that I want to <coughs> speak about third big features about database, the, the, this asterisk real-time architectures. Uh, ARA means that we can save all the configuration files normally located in ATC asterisk folder in a database. Um, real-time can be static or dynamic. If static, the unique change is that we put all configuration files in a database. But if we change something, we need to reload the, the module. Uh, with is, is, if real time is dynamic, uh, the great benefit is that has to risk access to the information live. So if we, can, if we modify an extension, we add or remove a queue or see peers, uh, isn't uh, needed, is not needed to reload any, any module. So we can take all information about peers, dial plan, queues, voicemail boxes, music on hold, and configure them in a database. So again, as uh, like CDR information, we can execute an a third party application and take access, write, update information uh, without reload nothing. So the great benefit is that uh, here we can create uh, our own administrator interface. Okay, real time, uh, we can configure real time in uh, xconfig.conf file. Here we say to asterisk where to load the information. We can load asterisk, we can define to load some information from uh, database and the other information, the rest of information from um, traditional ATC asterisk folder. And uh, here we get the, the information where to uh, find the, the, the data. For example, uh, my peers are loaded through ODBC the data source name is asterisk, and the table is hast c peers. Uh, and the extension are loaded from table dial plan through asterisk connector and via ODBC connection. Okay, I think this image um, show, show well the real benefit of real time. Here we have a cluster of asterisk server and each one is working with real time, say uh, loading information from a centralized database. Here we are, here we have all information about voicemail, peers, and dial plan. And MySQL database is replicated on the other MySQL server. 
So um, I think the benefits are, are clear. This system using real time is scalable, centralized, and replicated, replicable. OK, so uh, time is, is not enough to show all the configuration files, uh, do a step-to-step -step guide, but uh, we have uh, seen all the features possible, like uh, write in database CDR information, access from dial plan to any SQL command, and then using real time. If uh, you want to learn more about this topic, I invite you to visit these sites read the definitive guide, take access to the Asterix wiki, and uh, contact with me, of course. This is my in contact information, and uh, I'll wait for your feedback, and now uh, I'll wait your questions. So. Yes. Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, when you set up the, uh, you set up asterisks to store the CDRs. When you set up asterisks to store the CDRs and also to do the asterisk real time architecture, like in the config files and whatnot, does it does do those tables that those configurations and CDRs get stored in are those tables and SQL automatically created? Yes. Uh, in some cases, we it, table could be automatically created. Okay, and the yes. other question I have is for storing the CDRs, did you have to do anything uh, in the dial plane for that or does it automatically get, does it automatically occur once you set the configuration? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, in CDR? Once you set up the configuration to store CDRs, do you have to do anything in the dial plane to yes. store CDR for a given call? Yes, you can store new uh, customized parameters about a call. Oh, I see, okay. Yes, for example, bill, billing information Mm -hmm. You can set a, a billing flag to, to insert this information in the database. I think this, this is very powerful because you, you can improve the information about each call. Oh, de definitely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay. For Can you write in two different databases at the same time, MySQL? Right. Uh, Instead right, of no, the database, use no, my, my to write? Uh, no, you write one database, Only but, one. but uh, the replication is uh, done in MySQL level. You so cannot the replica write in two data no, different the databases? No. You. Just to have a, an alternative. Yes. Hey, so, uh, we, we use a modified version of MySQL, which is MySQL Galera. So you can run a master master environment of that and write data to either. MySQL instance without MySQL replication at any time. Mm -hmm. Just a different option. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> Can I create a call from a database? Create a call from database? Yeah, so I just add a third party application. I insert record to one of the tables, so then Asterisk server can read from there and create a call. I can, you create a application that pull information on database and then originate a call. Yes. Yes? Can I do, can, can I do that? Yes, because the information, you can change a flag in database or, or change some information and then a, a pulling application generate the call. So which configuration I need to modify in order to get those uh, record from database asterisk so they can make the call, automatically make phone call there? You need a third party application to, to do this. 
Okay, so the third party application only insert record to a table, but I do not know how can I make the phone call through the S3. No, you That's can different. interact with database and then uh, do another, another uh, function, create other functions. Call files or originate, yeah, or originate. Or you can also use originate command or create a AGI, AMI, ARI. Um, have you used uh, a different database apart from MySQL? No, at the moment not. Okay. No. Uh, any other questions? Okay, thank you, uh, okay. Francesco. Thank you.